What's up, y'all? I'm Reed the Fishmonger, and today we're gonna butterfly yellowtail snapper. We're gonna butterfly these fish two different ways. Let's go. First, we're gonna remove the scales of our fish. I use this spoon with some teeth on it. When scaling fish, I like these nice long motions. And when you're butterflying your fish, you wanna make sure that you hit all of those hidden areas when you're scaling your fish. When you're just doing the fillets, all you need to do is worry about getting the broad side of the fish. But when you're butterflying, you wanna make sure you hit underneath the tail, on top of the tail, underneath the throat, all those little hidden spots. Wow, look how beautiful these yellowtail snappers are in the water hours ago. That's how we roll at Captain Clay and Son Seafood Market. One of these, I'm gonna butterfly from the top. One of them, I'm gonna butterfly from the bottom. When we butterfly from the top, we call that canoe style, the way it sits. You'll see why it's called a canoe later. And so the one that I'm gonna butterfly from the bottom, I'm gonna gut first. The one I'm gonna butterfly from the top, I have to leave the guts in because we need the top connected. So one of these I'm gonna gut, I'll gut this one. Let's, um, huh, feels like this guy's been eating good. Let's see if there's something interesting in there. Take the tip of our knife, do a slight incision. We're gonna go in between the pelvic fins. When you're gutting your fish, it's important to have your knife in the guts very shallow because you do not want to puncture the inside. Whoa, check that out. That little yellowtail was eating on a nice size ballyhoo. That was a small ballyhoo, but nice size for the size of these yellowtail. That dude's got a good appetite. All right, now for the one that we're gonna be butterflying from the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and just rip the gills out now since we're here. And see how bright red and beautiful those gills are. That's how you know how fresh your fish is. Gills are exposed blood to oxygen. They're gonna be the first things to oxidate and brown. So bright red gills, super fresh fish. And we can take fresh water to our fish still because when we gutted it, we did not puncture the inside so none of the meat is exposed. It's all protected by this thin layer of membrane and we can still hit it with fresh water. Once the meat is exposed from a puncture, we can no longer use fresh water on our fish. All right, up next, we're gonna clip off the fins. Any kitchen shears work great. If you've got uh, poultry shears, those work great. These fins on these smaller snappers come off pretty easily, so you don't need anything too serious. If you're at home, whatever you got laying around will do the trick. All right, there we go. I like leaving the tail on. Now we're gonna make a little incision right on top of where the fin used to be. And you can see the skeleton is now exposed. That way we can ride our knife flush with that skeleton, making sure we don't lose any of that delicious meat. Now that we're to where the ribs are, we wanna use the tip of our knife and just gently break the connection the pin bones make to the ribs from the underside. Now, we wanna make sure we're resting our knife on top of the skeleton as we slide down. So the reason why we made a little incision is because you don't want the knife going through to the other side, jacking up your yellowtail meat. We're gonna flip it over. And repeat the process. We wanna make sure we're right on top of that skeleton. Tip of the knife, just break the connection those rib bones make to the pin bones. That way you can flip your knife around, rest it right on top of the skeleton, and slide down. Love it. All right, we just essentially reverse fillet it on both sides. Now we're gonna take our scissors and cut out the spine. Go at the base, crunch down. When it comes to cutting your spine, you can see these little vertebrae notches. That's where you're aiming for. If you don't hit in that spot, it's okay. Now you wanna go as close down to the skeleton as you can. That way you get as many bones out as possible. And now this will just pull right out. And look, there is no meat left on that skeleton. That is a thing of beauty right there. 
and now your yellowtail snapper is butterflied. Now we're gonna take out some more of the bones. When it comes to taking out the rib bones, it's a lot easier if your head is split. So we're gonna take our knife, we're gonna make a little incision, then give a little tap, tap. Look at that. And there is a little bit of spine at the top that exposes itself a little better when you split the head like that. So if you want, you can take your scissors and go ahead and snip that off and look at that. Beautiful butterfly right there. Now we're gonna take out the rib bones, slide right underneath all those rib bones, flip it around, and when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that your knife is as close to those bones as possible, and the rib bones end right here. So you don't wanna be angled down, because if you're angled down, you're going to lose that strip of meat. So you wanna be making sure that as soon as you hit the bottom of those rib bones, you're flicking your knife up, so that way you don't lose that end piece of belly meat. And there we go. Rib bones are out on that side. We still left the collar on. We're gonna repeat the process. Tip of the knife right underneath all those rib bones. Flip it around. Make sure that your knife is pushing on those bones. Flicking it right at the end. And beautiful, look at that. Got all the rib bones out now. All that's left are these pin bones. I'm gonna show you how to cut them out. We're going to make a nice incision on both sides. We're going to try to get under there and give it a little scooping motion like that. And look at that. We just pulled the whole pin bone line out without breaking the skin. Now this side is totally boneless, you know, with the exception of the collar. All right, we're gonna repeat that process again. We're gonna hit right there, hit right there. Give it a little scooping motion. And look at that, whole thing just comes right out, just like you filleted it. And there you go, guys. That is the first way to butterfly your yellowtail snapper or any other fish. That's where it's at right there, you guys. Look at that, that is just a beautiful specimen, if I do say so myself. All right, you guys, up next, we're gonna canoe style butterfly. So instead of coming from the belly side, we're gonna come from the top side. Basically looking like we're filleting it like a normal fish, we're just gonna leave it connected on the belly. It makes for a very pretty presentation. Let's check it out. First things first, we're going to snip off those fins. Well, first thing is scaling, already did that. Now we're clipping off the fins. They come off really easily. Again, I like leaving the tail on for presentation, so there we go. We're good to go. All right, you guys. So just like we're filleting it, except we're not gonna cut behind the head. We're going to get our knife in there, rest it along the skeleton, make sure your knife is riding along that skeleton so you're, that way you're not losing any of that delicious yellowtail snapper meat. Tip of the knife, base of the ribs, angle your knife slightly up. Separate the connection the pin bones make to the ribs. Now you wanna hit the other side but don't cut all the way through, you guys. Make sure that you leave it completely attached for presentation. Flip it over. Get a nice line started. Once your line is started, you can do a deeper cut. Make sure your knife is resting right along that skeleton. Tip of the knife, base of the ribs, angle it slightly up. Now we're going to go on top of those rib bones, making sure we don't puncture through to the other side of the skin, and beautiful. All right, you guys, quick and easy. You just fillet it normal, going around the ribs, and you can already kind of start to see the canoe. Now we're gonna take our scissors, just like before. We're gonna start cutting through as close to behind the head as you can get. 
Then we're going to come to the bottom. And now we're going to lift on that tail that we just cut through. And go at the bottom and run along as close to the skin as you can, making sure you don't cut through. So that way it holds that nice canoe shape. Once you get to the end of the ribs, this whole thing should be able to pull out like so and be very careful because you can only do this with ungutted fish, but you wanna make sure that those guts don't damage your meat. So remove them very carefully so that way you don't get any of that on your meat. And there's your canoe style yellowtail snapper. You can see why it's called canoe. Now, one thing I didn't show you guys on this is before cooking a whole fish, you always wanna make sure that the gills are out. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those gills. They come out very easily. You've got two sides of the gills. I put my finger underneath all of them and I'm pulling from here, not here. So pulling them up and out. And just like that, the gills are completely removed. All right, you guys, there's your two ways to butterfly your yellowtail snapper. Comment below, tell me which way you would rather do and why. You know, this one right here, you can stuff stuff inside of. It's fun, you still have the pin bones left in there. We did get all the rib bones out. On this one, you lay down flat. You can put all of your filling right on top of that or you can fry it. I mean, there's so many ways to pair these fish. It's not even funny. It is such a blast to get to work with fish and experience all the different ways of cleaning them. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you all have a killer day. Later.